Okay, this is a pickup where we left off last time. Um, we were talking about um, the differences between child abuse and neglect and some statistics on Indiana in particular. Um, age and gender. Um, as I said in the last one, um, the most vulnerable kids are the ones that are always, that tend to be abused most often. These are kids with special needs. These are kids that are incredibly young. Um, so younger kids are the most vulnerable because they're more likely to die um, just because they're f more fragile. Um, children who were younger than one died at a rate of 17 per 100,000 and that's three times the fatality rate for kids who are over one year. Um, so boys had a higher rate of fatality um, than girls, uh, two point, almost two and a half times, or two and a half per hundred thousand versus one point eight per hundred thousand. Um, so younger and boys. Um, as far as race, race and ethnic um, distinctions, um, as far as fatalities, mostly white at 43%, 30% for black, and 15% for Hispanics. The rate of fatalities is approximately three times higher than the rates um, per whites. So, again, the rates for African-American fatalities were um, higher, overrepresented in the population. Um, the, this is kind of similar to what we were talking about with murders as well. Um, the perpetrators and the victims tended to be of the same race, and that is a lot to do with the fact that most of the time the perpetrators of child abuse are the biological parents. Um, as far as perpetrators, more than half were women and about half were men. There was pretty, it was pretty equal. Um, the abusers younger than 18 were 2%. Um, 25 to 34 had the highest rate. So this is kind of the... This is a little bit higher than the age that we had seen for the other categories and other types of violence. Um, so 25 to 34. And about equal for males and females. Um, majority, as I said, were the, uh, the parent of the victim. And nearly 4% of perpetrators were an unmarried partner of the parent. So this is mom or dad's boyfriend or girlfriend um, and not the actual parent. Emotional abuse and neglect often uh, occur in families possessing the fewest resources. So this goes along with every other form of violence that we've talked about so far. The people with the least access to resources are the ones who we're going to see this type of behavior in. Um, this includes socio um, socioeconomic status, environmental stress, gender, and then the cultural reinforcements. Psychological characteristics, uh, low self-esteem, 
poorly developed, perceptual, attentive decision-making skills, unrealistic expectations of your kid's ability and their ability to control themselves, and relatively low levels of emotional competence. So these are the characteristics of the adult offenders. Um, characteristics of victims that make them more likely to be um, abused or neglected is being born out of wedlock, being born premature, having a um, defect, and being a stepchild. So, again, like I had said earlier, <clears throat> these are the kids who are the most vulnerable um, you know, not a lot of, potentially not a lot of stability in the home and, um, high needs. Uh, violence against the elderly is another form of, uh, family violence. violent abuse uh, and, and neglect of elderly or deliberate acts to injure their well-being and exploit them um, have become an increased concern. Elder abuse is defined as actions either deliberate or um, an act of omission resulting in actual or threatened harm harm to the health or welfare of an elderly person. Um, mistreatment of individuals over the age of 66 is a widespread public health problem, and that of seniors examined in health facilities, the prevalence of elder abuse is 32 cases per thousand. And this number is continuing to go up as we're seeing um, an increase in the elderly population. A lot of people are getting older, they're living longer, um, having more access to health care. So the um, percentage of the population that is over 65 has gone up a lot. Sibling violence is another form. Um, this is a lot more common. Um, but not really as publicized. Three in a hundred children are dangerously violent towards their siblings. In 1993, there were 1.25 confirmed cases of serious sibling violence within the U.S., um, but estimates have doubled or tripled um, just because of, of non-reporting. Um, one study from New Hampshire found that 35% uh, of respondents reported that they had been attacked, 13% uh, had been injured, and 6% had been attacked by a sibling with a weapon. And these are kids that are usually between 6 and 12 and are male. <clears throat> um, violence against pets. Uh, animal control, police officers, animal care advocates, um, women shelter staff, and violence experts acknowledge that violence against domestic animals is a frequent accompaniment of violence against other family members. The link between cruelty to pets and general violence in the American home has been established. Um, you know, this goes back to the issues of control, domination, um, explosive anger directed at weaker targets, low impulse control. Um, this goes right along with that. Um, children in abusive homes either themselves directly hurt or modeling parent violent behavior can transfer um, or redirect the violence against pets. 
Some experts warn that childhood cruelty towards animals can serve as um, desensitizing or anticipatory socialization experiences for um, later adult violence in their own relationships. Dating violence. Um, this can be a precursor for family violence. If you are okay with your significant other harming you, or if you are okay with harming your significant other, odds are um, that's what your marriage is going to look like as well. Dating violence or violence between intimate or casual partners um, who are not living together has been considered in recent years an important kind of barometer um, or predictor of future family violence. In a study in 2001, they found that one in three teens had experienced violence from a partner on at least one date. The primary issues revolve around decision making, control within the couple. Um, young men tended to assume or insist that this control was kind of their um, their male right, um, and not all young women agreed to go along with that um, asymmetrical power arrangement. Um, and as you know, we talked about earlier, um, asymmetrical power arrangements tended to be the more violent ones. And a Bureau of Justice report um, found similar patterns. One in five couples reported um, physical aggression, um, which included anywhere from slaps, shoves, all the way up to sexual violence, including rape. Between 30 and 35 percent of female high school students have reported experiencing this behavior um, with those between 16 and 24 having the highest rates of intimate partner violence. And the patterns seem explainable, whether um, dating violence um, kind of reveals the, the copycat of young people, um, this general trans or generational transfer that we had talked about before um, from either the family influence or it's this cultural preoccupation with violence, um, dating violence just kind of reveals the continuum that from pre-family heterosexual relationships to more established marriages. So it just kind of goes from one to the other, um, this pattern. A national survey in 2015 found that nearly 12% of high school females reported physical violence and 16% reported sexual violence within the last 12 months of the survey, which is quite a lot. Uh, for high school males, more than 7% reported physical violence and 5% uh, reported sexual violence in the same survey. So among the victims of sexual violence, physical violence, or stalking, nearly 23% of the females and 14% of the males first experienced some sort of violence by that partner before they were 18. So even if they were, you know, older than that when they did the survey, um, this kind of behavior had started when they were in high school. Um, so on a global scale, we can still look at this hierarchy um, in regards to family violence. Child mistreatment occurs worldwide. In some ways, the U.S. sees less of the worst than other places. Uh, violence against women is worse in non-Western societies where traditions and patriarchy are even more ingrained and 
the concept of equal rights is much less developed. A major reason that such violence is so widespread and so systematic is that most families are hierarchies with an unequal distribution of power and decision making and access to resources. Where women have gained more political power and economic power, there is less of this type of violence. Which kind of goes along with what we've been saying this whole time. So, um, Worldwide, about 40 million kids are subjected to abuse each year. Suicide is the third leading cause of death in adolescents around the world. Of the 1.39 million people involved in sexual exploitation, about half are children. Each year, approximately 1 million more kids around the world are introduced into um, the sex trade. And I believe this is our last one. Yeah. Um, so the, the one fact that um, Strauss had said was important is that violence begets violence. So children in violent homes are more likely to be violent towards their siblings, and then later in life, their adult relationships with their partners as well as their own kids. So this kind of goes along with that uh, generational transfer. And the major reason that family violence is so widespread and so systematic is that they are hierarchies. Um, if there's an unequal distribution of power, if there's an unequal distribution of authority, um, that increases the risk of violence, just as it does on any larger scale. We see the same thing within the family unit. <clears throat> Um, societies that have higher gender hierarchy relations um, have more violence and then perceived threats to those hierarchies and authority can be dealt with in a variety of ways but um, violence is an option that is often used and to that extent the relationships among power conflict violence within the home resemble the exact same asymmetric hierarchy that we see in the larger society and in the larger world um, in regards to um, different societies. So that is the end of family violence. Um, as always, if you have questions, you can post them to the discussion board on Blackboard, um, whether it's about content or it's about, um, you know, the class structure or assignments or whatever. Um, if anything comes up, let me know and I will keep posting these. Thanks.